Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms, and welcome to This Antenna Can Save Your Life. If you're an individual that operates two-way radio equipment and you find yourself often outside of range of terrestrial infrastructure, or you find yourself working in austere environments, a piece of equipment such as this added to your kit could be extremely useful. What we have here is just a small field deployable antenna and some feed line. And what this does is this allows us to expand our coverage footprint, or rather extend our range. Or what it does is allows us to maintain our coverage footprint while reducing our power output in order to preserve battery life. This particular antenna is a ground plane antenna, and this is in its travel configuration. It weighs 9 tenths of an ounce, and we have 20 foot of feed line here. It's an extremely simple antenna. It's a ground plane antenna, which is one of my favorite antenna designs, and it's a first antenna build for most amateur radio operators for a simple reason. It's a standard half wavelength antenna, and half wavelength antennas are the standard for radio frequency communication antennas for a simple reason. They work, and they're very hard to screw up. With. So to give you an example of what this antenna is capable of, I've set up a little test in a densely forested environment. This is a ground level mounted antenna you can see here and right now we're looking at a signal strength of minus 90 decibel milliwatts and attaching that same whip to our ground plane kit and elevating it to 15 feet through 20 feet of RG223 feed line we can see that our received signal strength now is minus 82.75 dB so we're getting almost a 7 or actually more than a 7 dB improvement now what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate for you just what that increase will sound like. And then we're going to go and generate an increase equivalent to what we just saw demonstrated on the spectrum analyzer. So what we just saw in that little test is our antenna here with this feed line provided us with a gain of 7.75 dB and that of course is after the loss in the feed line and that is compared to an antenna at ground level like would be mounted to a portable radio. These kind of gains that you see in something like this are bi-directional meaning that the gain that you experience and receive is also going to be a gain that you're going to experience and transmit. So now that we understand that let's talk about what is a ground plane antenna and how would we build one of these for ourselves. The ground plane antenna makes it an excellent first antenna build. It's extremely simple to construct. You can construct the radiating elements out of just about any kind of conductor you can get your hands on. It's a great candidate for a field antenna. Quarter wavelength radiating element or vertical radiator and two to four quarter wavelength radials. The radials are tied to the shield side. The center conductor is tied to the vertical radiator. Our feed point is tied to our 50 ohm coaxial cable and this relationship between or this angle relationship between our vertical radiator and our radials should be approximately 45 degrees and as we change that you'll watch your feed point impedance change. The heart of my simple ground plane antenna system are these very inexpensive SMA barrel head connectors. These connect two SMA male connectors together. They have a shoulder they have a star lock, a split lock, and a nut. If you buy them in a bag of 10 on Amazon, they're $1.40 each. Now let's talk about our elements. What material did I choose and why for this build? The material I selected for this simple ground plane build is bicycle shifter cable. You can get this stuff on Amazon. They sell it at Walmart and all kinds of other places. You can get it from a bicycle shop as well. This is like eight dollars for a pack of ten on Amazon and that's enough to build six VHF ground plane antennas. This material is extremely durable and what's nice about it is is it's somewhat rigid and it does not take a set like hookup wire or something of that nature. Now if you elected to build this antenna out of hookup wire you certainly could do so. But utilizing this cable being as rigid as it is allows the cable on its own to maintain more of an ideal angle relationship between the vertical radiator and the radials at the feed point. If you build your antenna elements out of stainless steel bicycle cable as I have done, I highly recommend you get a set of cutters made for cutting stainless steel bicycle cable. They do a really good job of cutting the cable 
very easily. And failing that, if you choose not to get a set of cable cutters like that, don't try to use your or any other kind of cable cutter because you will damage it. You can, however, utilize a cutoff wheel on a Dremel tool or on an angle grinder to cut. What exactly is a quarter wavelength and how do we determine what a quarter wavelength is at the frequency of interest? This formula here, 468 divided by the frequency in megahertz, is a standard, well-known, half wavelength formula. And this gives us a half wavelength in feet at the frequency of interest. We're going to build for VHF, and we're going to build it for the 2 meter amateur band. Our center frequency of that is going to be 146 megahertz. So we take 468 divided by 146. This gives us 3.2 feet. Take 3.2 feet, multiply it times 12, and that gives us 38.4 inches. So to make a quarter wavelength elements, which is what we're making for our ground plane antenna, will cut each element to 19.2 inches. And here are our rough rule quarter wavelength element lengths for common amateur radio bands, 6 meters through 70 centimeters. If you desire to build the antenna for operation in another radio service, merely utilize the formula outlined earlier. Our vertical radiator. Utilizing the materials already shown for this particular build, how would we go about making our own vertical radiator? To build your vertical element, I'm just going to go ahead and use a SMA male crimp connector for RG58. So we take our connector out of the package. We're not going to need the ferrule at all, but we will need our center pin and we're going to start with that. Well, our center pin isn't going to fit on this steel cable, which is to be anticipated. So. What we're going to do is, is we're going to remove some strands, and as you see, it will fit there. And we'll take our cutter and cut back those strands we do not need. We want to make sure we capture those pieces, and we can solder this together. Now to insulate our element from the body of the connector, we're just going to put some glue-lined heat shrink on here. And we're going to line it up so the base of that is even with the base of the center pin. And we'll apply some heat. Now we're going to slide our connector body over our element. And push it through until it stops. And our connector is assembled. Now we'll take another piece of heat shrink and run it down. And this will go over the tail of the connector and it will adhere to that first section we have in here and it'll make it pretty strong. Now, you're not going to be able to go out a window on it, but for what we're doing here, it's going to work out just fine. And now our vertical element is completed. Here are two example ground plane antennas. Both of them are currently in their travel configuration, and you can see this one has a smaller form factor than this one does. This one features a vertical radiator. This one does not have one attached to it. This is a dual band version and this right here is VHF only. The other differences are is this one is entirely assembled with crimp connectors and this one here is soldered together. My idea is is you're going to end up having to take your whip off of your portable radio in order to attach your feed line to hook to your antenna so why not go ahead and utilize it and save yourself weight and frustration of carrying something additional. Now we can see the body of our antenna here. We have two quarter wavelength VHF radials and two quarter wavelength UHF radials and we affix our feed line here. You can see the construction technique employed here. Four quarter inch red ring terminals and we'll do this four times. Just go ahead and you can certainly solder these if you choose to do so. You can crimp them like I'm doing. You know, it's your antenna. Build it the way you want. It's time to assemble our ground plane. Take your barrel connector Take that star lock, place the star lock on the long shank side, which is where your radials are going to go, and go ahead and just start stacking your radials. Tighten your nut and try to space these radials as evenly as possible. In our VHF ground plane, we have our vertical element here and we have our radials. 
and you can see that we've soldered these to a radial plate and I've just made this radial plate out of 25 thousandths brass shim stock. You can buy this at a hardware store and it's simple just to cut this out with a pair of 10 snips and punch some holes in it and then just solder this cable to some brass shim stock. You'll note that I've used a ring terminal on the end of the vertical radiator on this antenna and at every end of the antenna on the dual band variant. And the simple reason is, is this is a safety consideration. You could, if you desired to use it as a hang loop, you could use it for that. It's certainly strong enough for that. Now to suspend the antenna, if you've built your own vertical radiator and used one of these ring terminals at the very top of it. You can see it's pretty easy to suspend the antenna. Now let's say that we plan on using our whip antenna off of our portable radio and just use this antenna as a ground plane kit. It's pretty easy to do it and suspend it. And I've done videos on this in the past before. All we have to do is, is make a small loop and it can be an overhand loop. It doesn't have to be anything special because we're not going out a window on it. You know, something like that will suffice. And then merely all we do is, is place it around where the feed point is. Then we'll take our coaxial cable and attach it. And then just merely make a couple of half hitches. And how we do that is, is just take and just make a twist. And you can get away with a couple of them, you can get away with one of them. You can see one of them here is probably going to suffice for suspending the antenna. One of the greatest strengths of the ground plane antenna is just how broad banded it is. And you can see that shown here. We're sweeping from 130 to 170 megahertz. And the highest WR point is 3 and the low is 1. And this is the results at UHF using the Nogoya antenna as a vertical radiator. I hope this has given you food for thought. This is an incredibly useful piece of gear for your radio kit. It's a great way to teach people antenna theory. It's a great first antenna project. It's great for either a radio class or a radio club to build these together. The cost per antenna is around $10 and that's building your own whip. And the most expensive part of that is the SMA connector. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.